In this video, I want to explain what function calling is in OpenAI's API and show you how to use them in Flutterflow. But before that, here's what function calling and Flutterflow allows you to do. I've got this little app right here where I can put in a YouTube link and it's going to generate a quiz based on that video. So let's go grab a video from the Flutter YouTube page, maybe this one right here. So let's paste it in and analyze and create our quiz. Okay, what is the unique identifier for your app in iOS called? I think it's called the bundle ID. So let's see if it's right and it's right, beautiful. So function calling is one of the most powerful features of OpenAI's API, but it's a bit confusing because it's poorly named. It should be named Generate Structured output because that's what it does. Instead of just outputting a string of text in response to your prompt, function calling gives you only the information you tell it to and in the structure you tell it to. And this solves a very specific problem. You see, we all normally use ChatGPT like this. We ask a question and it gives an answer. The answer could be short or long, it could contain code or just text, and this is great. But if you wanna use ChatGPT in an app, that is, your program is interacting with it, not directly a human interacting with it, this might not work. For instance, maybe I give ChatGPT a Wikipedia article and I wanna create a multiple choice quiz based on it. Well, in order to have a quiz in my app, I need the data structured in my backend in a very particular way. Like, I can't just dump in a normal response that I get from ChatGPT. With function calling, you can do this. You can tell ChatGPT to give you exactly the structure you need for the quiz. Or maybe I don't need the structured data at the end of the program, but maybe somewhere in the middle. So let's say I have an app where the user can ask for the weather in natural language, and then the app uses that location to call an API to get real-time weather data. Because of course, ChatGPT doesn't have access to real-time data. In this example, I need ChatGPT to take the natural language prompt like the prompt, what's the temperature right now in Addis, and return just the location so I can call the weather API using that location. That's the beauty of function calling. So let's build it. So I'm here in my app and let's talk about the logic that needs to happen. So I'm gonna dump a link in here, then I need to get a transcription and then take that transcription and send it off to ChatGPT with function calling so it returns to me the structured data that I then store in my database. Okay, so let's start at the end, that database. After all this logic, what do I actually need? Well, I've got a collection set up right here called questions and it has four fields very simple an answer which is just a string the question itself which is a string when I created it and finally all the options which is just a list of strings and this is the structure I'm gonna need to get out of ChatGPT. all right so let's move back up to the top of our logic chain the first thing that I'm gonna need is I need to get the transcription of the YouTube video and I'm gonna do that using BuildShip. BuildShip is an amazing tool that allows you to build backends quickly, easily, and visually. And here's my whole backend right here. So we start off with a trigger right here. That is, this is the trigger that starts this flow of logic here. And it's simply a post request to a URL. I've just appended this quiz path right here. And to see the final URL, you can click into here and see it right there. Next up, I've got this node that's using an NPM package for extracting captions. So if you just click onto one of these plus where you add a node and search for YouTube, you can see I just dropped it in right here. And this takes two parameters here, the URL of the video that you want captions from and the language it defaults to English. That's why I don't have any value in here. Now you can either hard code values in right here or you can set them dynamically, which is what's going on right here because the URL I wanna dump in here is the URL that gets passed in when I make this call. It's part of the post body. And so to see that, you can just click in here. And when you hover, you can see that the full path is the request body dot URL. So when you make this call, the body of your post should have a property called URL. And you can access this by coming into variables, request, body, 
and hit this URL. Now, where is this coming from? Well, that's coming from up here. So if I come in here and I go to edit and I go to output, you can see all the values I'm outputting. And I added on to the body right here, this string of URL, because that's what I'm expecting. Okay, so what do we get out of this node right here when it runs? Well, you can see that if you come into this test mode right here. So let's dump in a link to our video right here. Let's test this node. And here's what we get. We get this object with a subtitles property, which is an array of objects with the start, duration, and the actual text. So we need to do a little cleanup here. And we'll do that in our return node. So we can just cancel out of this, and we see we've got this return node. Now, of course, in real life, you would want to do better debugging and error handling, but just for the demo, this is fine. And when we go into the editor, you can see that I'm returning this object with one property called transcriptions. I'm referencing that subtitles output, which I accessed from here. You can see we have access now to this YouTube caption extractor because we are after it now. And I just came in here and you can see that's what we have. I'm just mapping over each item and returning the item text property. And there's just some cleanup to get rid of some text I don't need. And finally, joining together as a string. OK, great. And when you're done, you can just ship it. And it deploys shockingly fast. Now, you can either copy the endpoint URL or export the API as an open API spec that you can directly import into Flutterflow. If you've got a bunch of workflows that you want to import, you can import them all at once by going over to Settings and APIs and selecting whichever API you want to export. If you want to export all of them, you can do that. And then select if you want it as a YAML file or JSON file. Flutterflow accepts both. All right, let's jump back into Flutterflow. So let's come over to our API manager. If you want to import that YAML or JSON file, you would do so right here. But I've set up that API call. Here's the URL. It's a post. And when you look at our body, we've got that one thing we're expecting is just the URL. And I've defined one variable because this is going to be a dynamic value because every time we make this call, we're going to be passing in a different YouTube video. And so if we come over to response and test and let's paste in a URL and test that call and beautiful, we get our transcription. Finally, we're going to want to grab the path to this so we can use it in our app because remember, after we get this, we're going to want to send it over to OpenAI. So if we go into our JSON paths here, we have one path, which is just the transcription. We've selected it, given it a name, transcription, and save. Beautiful. That's half of our logic done. Finally, we've got our open AI call with function calling. You can see the documentation here. So let's jump over there and take a look. In the past few months, the syntax of this API has changed. So just make sure you're using the most up to date version. For function calling, you just use the normal chat completions endpoint. And just like a normal call, it accepts the messages, which contain different users like system and users and their messages. We're going to be using both system and user. The system is used for any background information or instructions you want to give to ChatGPT about how you want it to handle this. If you wanted to use a certain style or act as a certain type of person, like an assistant. And the user message is just the normal message you'd put into the prompt. Next, you specify the model. Now, if you're using function calling, make sure you're using a model that supports function calling. These are the current ones that support function calling. So let's put these things in here first and then come back for our last thing that we need, and that's the function calling itself. So I'm here in my call. It's a post request. There's my URL. And make sure you have your authorization with your API key. And if you don't know where to get that, we've made a video where we go over that that I've linked below. But the real meat and potatoes here is in our body, which is JSON. And so you can scroll down and this is what we've covered thus far. We've got our model and we're just going to use 3.5 turbo with the 16K context. That's just to make sure we've got enough tokens to cover a 10 or 15 minute video. And next we've got a messages, which is an array and we're using two objects. One is our system instructions and our other is the user. For the system instructions, I'm just saying create a quiz with three options based on input transcription from the user, output a question as a string, options as an array of three strings, and an answer that's identical to the string that is an identical string to the correct answer in the options array. Okay, so that's what I'm telling ChatGPT behind the scenes. And the user 
It's just going to be the transcription. That's what we're dumping in. And of course, this has to be a variable because it's going to be dynamic. Every time we run this logic, it will be a different transcription. So we've defined this over here as a string. Beautiful. Okay, finally, let's do our function calling. So there's an example of function calling over here, and we're going to scroll down so we can see it. And it's changed recently. So it used to be under function call and functions, but those are deprecated and they're found under tools. So if we twirl this open, you can see that this tools property is a list of tools that the model may call. Currently, only functions are supported as a tool. So in the future, there will be a bunch of things that you can use here. But right now, the only tool is function calling. And this array has two items. One, it has a type. And because only functions are supported right now, the only value that is accepted for this is function. Then you have the body of the function itself. And here's the real meat of it. First, you've got a description, and this is just a description of what the function does. So in our case, it's create a quiz with this structure. And this description is used by the model to choose when and how to call the function. Now, we're going to force this function to be called every time. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. But if you only want it to execute when it thinks it needs to, that's also an option. Next, you give a name to the function. And finally, parameters. This is where you define exactly what you want ChatGPT to return to you. So let me show you the structure of ours. So if we scroll down here, you can see we've got our tools. Of course, it's a type function. And then we've got our function itself. The name is create quiz. The description is the same one I gave to the system up there. And finally, we've got our parameters. That is the structure of the data that we want to come out. We want it to be an object, and the object will have the following properties. It will have a question property, an answer property, and an options property. This one will be a string, string, and this one will be an array. Then we give a description about what this property is, and so I'm just saying it's the question based on the transcription, and same with the answer. And then finally, if you have an array, you need to have this items property where you give it a type and these are going to be strings. Okay, great. We've only got one other property we need to handle and that is our tool choice right here. And this controls which function is called by the model. If you give it the value of none, that means it won't call the function. Auto means that it will make a judgment as to whether it should call it or not. Or you can specify a particular function by giving it this structure right here, and that forces it to call the function. That's what we want. We want this to be deterministic. So this should be of type function, and then we give it the name of the function. That's the name that we gave up here, right here. Okay, let's go do that. So we've got tool choice, function with a name of create quiz, which is this name up here. Beautiful. All right, let's test this call out. So let's come over to response and text. Let's pass in a paragraph from our docs about state management. Let's see what it does with that. Okay, beautiful. Let's scroll down and take a look at this. And you can see here in tool calls, function and arguments down here is where we get that structure. Now, I know this looks really funny right here, and I'll talk about that in a second, but you can see in here, we've got a question, which type of state variable can be accessed and modified from any part of your app? The answer is app state, and the options are app state, page state, component state. Beautiful. So this is exactly what we want, but what's the deal with this structure here? Why does it look funny? Well, it looks funny because while this may look like an object or a map, it's actually JSON. It's JSON nested inside this JSON response. So while Flutterflow will parse this JSON response automatically, we have to do another parsing of this right here because this is just a JSON string. Now, why is it like this? Well, it's probably because OpenAI wants flexibility in this response here. And by allowing this to be just a string here and not have that deterministic structure, 
this response is more protected from error. Okay, but what we need to do now is we need to just grab a reference to this arguments property. So if we just scroll down here, I've already selected this JSON path to our arguments and given it the name function response and we're all good. Okay, that's all the logic. Let's see how it's wired up in the app. So we have two screens, the first one right here with simply a text field and then our button with some logic in here. The first thing we need to do is we need to get the transcription of the URL that was dumped in here. So we're making a backend call to that build ship endpoint. So we've got our backend call and we're referencing that get transcription endpoint. It accepts a URL and that's coming from a widget state on the page, which is that text field. Now, if that succeeds, so if we get a transcription back, then we wanna send that transcription over to OpenAI so we can get that structured data from our function call back. So we're doing another API call, this time to our OpenAI function call, and we're dumping in that transcription which is from an action output variable right there. That's that first one up there. And we're referencing our JSON path to the transcription. Remember, there's only one property on there, just a transcription. Okay, beautiful. Now, what we get back from OpenAI, we're dumping into this variable right here, OpenAI response. And we need that because that's what we're gonna store in our Firestore. So we have a backend call to our Firestore. We're gonna create a document in our questions collection, and we're just setting all these fields. Now, here is where we have to do that parsing of the JSON, that nested JSON. And we're doing that through a custom function. So before we jump in here, let's jump over to that function so we can see what's going on. So I've got one parse JSON function right here. We have one argument we're passing in here, which is a string. That's that nested JSON string with all of our beautiful structured data. And we're just returning some JSON. So first here, we're just doing a null check. So we're setting this variable equal to whatever is passed in or an empty string to just make sure we get no null errors. And finally, we're just calling this JSON decode to parse our JSON, which is coming from this Dart convert package. Beautiful. So we're dumping that string in and getting JSON out of it. All right. So now when we come back here, we can understand what's going on. So we have our question. Let's start there. And we want to get it out of that nested JSON. So we first want to bind it to our custom function and we pass in the response we get from OpenAI and the path that we set up function response. That's that nested JSON. Then we get JSON out of here and what we want out of there is our question. So if you think back to our parameters that we set up in our post body, we're just grabbing that question that we originally set up. And all the rest of these work exactly the same way. So we have the function we're passing in, but instead we want the options out of here. And for our answer, we want the answer. Same thing. And then finally, we just have a created at, so we're just giving it a timestamp of the current time. Finally, we're navigating to the actual quiz page. Beautiful. So let's take a look at that. When this page loads, I'm doing a backend call right here. I'm looking at that questions collection. I only want a single document here. Of course, you can change it however you want. And I'm just ordering it by when it was created decreasing so I get the most recent one in my collection. This is just for the demo. Okay, so now I have that document in here. Now I just need to bind it to the different widgets I have here. So I've got a question right here and I've got that bound to this questions document and to the question. Beautiful. And we've got the options right here. I have that bound here to the options list right there. And finally, we've got the logic on our submit answer. So if we open that up, we are just checking that whatever's selected in the radio button, so that's in our widget state radio button, is equal to whatever the answer is in our document. So if it's true, I'm gonna show a snack bar that's green and I say correct. If not, I say try again with a warning color. And that's it. That's how to use function calling from OpenAI in your Flutterflow app.